Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D Now. So I get asked a lot of questions from beginners about 3D printers, how to set them up, and common problems they have when taking a new 3D printer out of the box. On my community discord I get a bunch of questions about printers not working correctly initially, and how to fix problems to get a 3D printer printing. I thought it would be beneficial to go over the steps to get a new 3D printer up and running if you are an absolute beginner or have problems with your 3D printer while setting it up. I'll be including the answers to some of the most frequent issues I hear as well throughout the video. If you have any other questions that I do not answer in this video, feel free to head over to my community discord with the link below and I'll be happy to help you out. So obviously the first step is always to take your new 3D printer out of the box. Now be careful when taking out all the parts and accessories and make sure to look through all the packaging in case some small pieces or screws got loose during shipping. Now, depending on your printer, you may have printed assembly instructions or online videos, but I would highly recommend watching a few unboxing videos on your specific 3D printer first so you can get used to the part and assembly process. This way you know what to expect before you begin. When the assembly is finished, make sure the frame is sturdy and all parts are not damaged. The base should not wobble at all on a flat surface and the frame should be nice and stiff. One of the most important things that beginners forget to check is the power supply voltage, especially with 3D printers from other countries. On the side of the power supply, there should be a 110-220 voltage switch, and this must be changed to the correct position for where you live in the world. I will show a chart from Gearbest that shows what voltages are in different countries. If you forget about this step and pump 220 volts through the power supply on the 110 setting, it will probably pop and you have to get a new one. So be careful. Also, make sure the belts are tight on all the axes that you have one. You should be able to press on it a little bit and see it flex a small amount. It should not be loose enough to skip gear teeth or have slop. It should not be tight enough that it starts to bend parts or not move smoothly. Next, make sure the set screws are tightened in the Z-axis lead screw coupler. This is the motor that makes the print head move upward every layer. There is a small screw that tightens the lead screw to the motor and allows it to rotate. Also, you can loosen the Z-axis lead nut just a little bit. If the nut that turns on the lead screw is too tight, it may bind up and not turn smoothly if you do not have a good quality lead screw or lead nut. Do not loosen it until it falls off, but just a small half turn so that it has some play in it is plenty. Make sure the hot end carriage and bed are tight as well. Use your hand to wobble the extruder assembly and print bed. If they are moving, you should adjust the concentric nuts. Use the wrench that probably came with your printer to turn the nuts so that the bed and extruder assembly are tight and moving smoothly, but make sure not to tighten them too much. Next, make sure the x-axis gantry is level and parallel to the bed. Some printers only have one z-axis motor and the other side is not powered. Make sure the bar that the hot end moves along is perfectly level and parallel to the bed. On some printers, you can also adjust the concentric nuts holding the x-axis gantry to make it more level and move smoothly. For the next step, unplug the stepper motors to not drive current back into the control board. Slowly move all axes by hand to make sure they are sliding smoothly. There should be no bumps or jumps along the motion path. If they are, Make sure to check the rails that they are sliding on and clean any debris you see. Remember to plug back in the stepper motors after this step. Also make sure all the limit switches are plugged in as well. These are the three switches that trigger to make the printer home correctly. Turn the printer on and make sure the screen powers up correctly. Move all axes from the screen and make sure they are moving in the correct direction and smoothly. You may have to find the option in the motion or control menu of your printer's screen. Now, heat up the nozzle and bed, let it sit, and then cool it down. Make sure the temperature is reading correctly on the screen and the hot end and bed work as intended. Next, move the bed to a low position by turning the screws under the bed. You just want to make sure the bed is low enough that when you home the printer, it doesn't smash the nozzle into the heat bed. Now auto home the printer through the screen. Adjust the bed height to be 0.1 millimeters from the nozzle. 
so move the print head to the four corners of the bed and at the center through the screen. You can use a piece of printer paper to check that the height is correct. Use the screws under the bed to raise and lower sections of the surface, and when running the paper under the nozzle, you should feel a slight resistance. This is just the initial calibration, and we will make it better in a little bit. Auto home the printer again and test the five points. Verify they are still at the correct height, and if not, adjust the screws again. Additionally, preheat the printer to the correct settings for your filament. You should probably start with PLA if you're an absolute beginner. Also, don't use the cheap roll of plastic that came with your printer, as it is usually not the best quality and your results will reflect that. Get a good spool of filament from a known manufacturer and I'll put some links in the video description below. The correct hot end and bed temperatures for your filament should be on the spool or the manufacturer's website. For PLA, usually anywhere from 185 to 205 C on the nozzle is good and 60 C on the bed. Now insert the filament by hand and let it extrude. You can release the extruder gear with one hand and gently push in the filament with the other. Make sure it extrudes evenly and smoothly. The plastic should come out fairly straight downward and not curl up to hit the nozzle. Now that you have the filament purged, clean the plastic from the nozzle and make sure it is not oozing before the print. Wipe down your bed surface with isopropyl alcohol or whatever your printer manufacturer recommends so it is clean. The next step is to print a test model or calibration model. Find a model on Thingiverse or another website that tests the four corners of your bed and at the center. I will include the one that I used in the video description below as well. So slice the model and start printing. If you want to learn how to slice with Cura, I made a video about that and I'll link that in the iCard above. When printing, look closely at the nozzle and how it is laying down the first layer of material. If you see the nozzle is squishing into the bed, then you need to increase the Z offset. If the layer is too high and not sticking, then you need to lower the Z offset. This setting adjusts in the software the height of the nozzle and is found in your printer's menu on the screen. The first layer should be a perfect harmony between pushing the plastic onto the bed and leaving some height for the plastic to lay down evenly. This height also can be different for the layer height you choose in your slicer, so be careful. I would recommend 0.2mm layer height for beginners. Also, if you run your finger over the print lines, you should feel a slight bump, and the plastic should not come off the bed. As that print is going on, you should also take notes if certain parts of the print are too low or too high. You can stop the print, adjust those bed leveling screws, and restart the print. Making sure the first layer is absolutely perfect is one of the most important parts of getting a nice 3D print. And once you are happy with the calibration, you can move on to a benchmark print. I would recommend a 3D Benchy as it has all the hard features to print. Your Benchy should have a nice smooth outer surface, nice overhangs with no stringing, viewable text on the bottom of the print, perfect circles on the top part of the model, and overall look like a quality 3D printed part. If you have any problems with your Benchy and need some feedback, definitely tweet me a picture so I can take a look or show us in the community Discord server. The links are all below. So at this point, you should have your 3D printer up and running. You can now slice up any object you want and start printing. And remember to check the calibration often, and once you are comfortable, you can try to make some upgrades to your 3D printer as well. I made a whole video on that, which I will link in the iCard above. So, thanks for watching everyone. Subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Like this video if you liked it, and I will see you all in the next video.